And hello again everyone and welcome back to The Longest Journey. Now if you remember last time, April had found herself stranded at sea and then rescued, or maybe kidnapped, depending on your point of view, by the Merum and taken to their underwater city. And rather than be a gatherer for them for six years, she killed a Snapjaw, found her amulet, and found a hidden shrine of the Merum, and they can became convinced that she is the water stiller, the one who will reunify their people. And she has decided that the people she needs to be reunified, they need to be reunified with, are the Alation themselves, the wing flying creatures. And so they have taken her to the island of Alaeus. She's there finally, and she is going to have to try to find a way to make friends with them and reconcile them with the Merum. No pressure, though. So anyway, let's continue with The Longest Journey. And here we are on a surprisingly Oceanic Airlines flight-free Jungle Island. So, I guess we got here finally. Emerald green clear as the morning sky. That's perfect holiday water. Your perfect holiday water is emerald green? What is life in the 23rd century like? Good grief. Oh look, here's some rope. That's probably useful. And some other debris. There's a jungle back here. I could get lost if I just wander off into the jungle with no idea what the island looks like or where I'm heading. Okay, so we won't worry about that right away. Uh, let's start by going... Uh, we'll go this way. Oh, this guy looks a little crabby. Get it? Uh, okay, I'll stop making that joke. It's some kind of giant crab. It sounds like the poor thing's in a lot of pain. Yeah, the shell does look way too tight. Maybe he's outgrown it, but can't shed it. Or whatever it's called. Well, I guess that's as good a word as any. I'll just take a shot here and ask you. Is there any chance you speak, like, a real language? Like, um, Arcadian or English? Okay. Now, is there some kind of magic I have to learn, or potion I have to drink, or eat, or ingest in some way to learn your language? Because that's usually how it goes. No? Too bad, although I'm glad I don't have to draw blood or swallow a stone or something. Can't help but feel that you're asking me for help, though. It's the strangest thing. After all, you're just clicking your claws, aren't you? It's not as if you're really talking, is it? Actually, he probably is, April. You ever hear of Morse code? Although, that's not Morse code. I actually tried to figure it out one time that way. can't break the shell. It's too thick and solid. I'm not sure what you thought that was going to accomplish, April, but whatever. I guess the crabs live over here. It's the village of the giant crabs. Hey, that sounds like a great name for a B-movie. Village of the giant crabs. You still have B-movies in the 23rd century, too. Well, okay, there's more of these crab houses. Now, I have no idea where the crabs are that would go there, except for this one poor guy, which actually kind of looks like a guy kneeling under a shell. I mean, that's not what crabs look like, but okay. Clear, unpolluted waters, overflowing with life. Just one more reason why Arcadia is both a vacationer's and environmental activist's wet dream. Literally. And thank you for putting that image in my head, April. Um, there's something up here, some sort of statue. It's a big statue. Thank you for espousing on that. And there's a path that goes up there. Let's go see what's up there. Take your time, April. Don't fall, April. This is a long ways down. I can see clear to the bottom. 
This really is an excellent spot for fishing. Who said anything about fishing, April? Why did that come to mind? But okay, somebody's been here though. It's an old fireplace. And we have a statue. Now, we're going to see several of these. So I'm going to point out some details here. We have a statue top. The top half of the statue depicts a creature with a big mouth calling out. We have a middle. The bottom part of the statue depicts a creature with large ears listening to something. She said bottom, but it's middle here. And down here we have the foot, or the base of the statue. Where we have some symbols, like there's an S, and an underscore, and an arrow, and kind of an H. And we have a little mouth here. It's a creature with a big mouth. It's a creature with large ears. And which apparently correspond to the big ones up on the top of the statue. We also have this little thing. It's a triangular hole, like a keyhole. Yeah, obviously there's a puzzle here, you think? Alright, that's all we can do here right now. We don't have what we need. I just, we needed to know that this place is here. So, in the meantime, we're going to go back to the beach. And we're going to go explore in the other direction for a bit. I'm going to go up this path. And up here we have some ruins. It's the ruins of an old city. And it has a little statue too. The bottom half of the statue depicts a large eared creature listening intently. And this is basically the same as the one we saw before, so I'm not going to pay too much attention to it right now. It's a tiny tree. And we have this hole. It's a deep hole, more like a crevice actually, caused by some kind of seismic activity. God, it must be at least 50 meters down. The crevice widens out into a huge cave just below, and there's water at the bottom. Yeah, probably because you're, what, five feet from the edge of this cliff? Whatever. Oh, I failed to mention, there's also a big volcano up here. It's a huge volcanic mountain. Just so we know. Now, we obviously need to go down into this cave. And fortunately, we found some rope, remember? And there's a convenient tree to tie it to. And now we can go down. And, yep, it's a deep cave. Yeah, April's Laura crafting her way in here. You notice I don't have control yet, so there we go. Big nests, once housing the elation, but now empty and in disrepair. Okay, so there's an elation city up here, or the ruins of one. We can go down here. Where we have another city. That's a Merum city. So, apparently the Merum and the elation both lived in this same cave, but something happened. It's the remains of a stone structure that probably fell down here through the crevice. There's a piece amongst the rubble that looks like a bolt or a key. It's intact. Do you think we probably need to worry about that one? Yeah. We need that. Okay. Let's go back up. And yeah, there's a slightly different interface there for getting to the rope, and we don't see her climb up it, huh? Well, let's take the rope back, because that may be useful again later. The fact that it didn't just dis disappear and that it lets us pick it up probably means it will be useful later, but that's just the way these things go. Um, alright. Now, we found this little key, remember? This thing? It's a kind of stone key, carved into the uncanny likeness of a key, with a head on the end. It's a key carved into the likeness of a key. I'm not going there. 
Okay. But we have a key and something that looks like a keyhole, remember? Oh, look, over here we have a little picnic table looking things. We have underscores. There's an arrow again. And you notice that bits of it are missing here or there. So, I want to take the key. And we can put the key here. Now, you notice that with the key, I have, I can take the key back or I can turn something, turn the key to the left or the right. If I turn the key to the left, this ring rotates. If I turn the key to the right, this ring rotates. So, this is a way to adjust these things. And I'm going to assume for right now that the one up on the top of the um, cliff by the beach works the same way. So we found two statues. I'm willing to bet we'll find a few more. Let's go back down to the beach. Now, remember how April said she couldn't go into the jungle because she would be lost? Well, wouldn't it be great if we could look at the jungle from overhead? Or maybe find someone who could fly and look at the jungle? Oh yeah, right. We know someone like that, don't we? There's that little dance she always does again. And hello, crow. April! You're alive! You're here! You're soaking wet! Where did you go? I thought you drowned. I was completely miserable. And the chicks on this island are so prissy. They don't even care for a kiss unless you're all settled down with a nest in your own territory. <laughs> We're glad to see you too, Crow. Glad to see you haven't lost the gift of the gab, Crow. Lady, you have no idea how limited bird Twitter can be. It's all, hi this and here I am that, all damn day long. I haven't had a decent conversation in days. Well. Making up for it now. I never know when you're gonna go AWOL on me again. Yeah, bird Twitter is hard to carry in a conversation. What with that 140 character limit and all that, but okay. Um I'm gonna skip part of this because April's just gonna fill in Crow what's going on and Crow's gonna talk about what he's done, so we'll be back in a second. Okay. So what we need to do is get Crow to search the jungle out for us. And the way we do that is to pick up Crow and use him where we want to go. What can you tell me about the island, Crow? Only what I've been able to see from above. There's a volcano, dead I think, and lots of jungle, and some nice beaches. I'd like to explore the jungle, but I'm afraid I'm going to get lost. Any ideas? Well, I could stay airborne and keep track of where you are. That way I could direct you if... Sorry, when you get lost. Sounds like a super plan, Crow. Let's go. Yeah, it's a little weird the way you, you pick up and use Crow like he's an item. But Okay, here we can see the island and presumably presumably this is the beach we're on, so that's the archway we went through and I guess the other cliff is up there, and over here is this big city, and the big ruined city. And I got a question about this city. The Alation and Merum cities were underground. That's presumably the entrance to them right there. Who built this city? That's obviously not Alation or Merum. Oh well. The only place we can really go right now is here, at the top of the volcano. The rumbling is much fiercer here, and the ground is really shaking. It's definitely seismic. It has got to be emanating from this volcanic mountain. I mean, it looks dead, but it must be about to wake up or erupt or something. Great! After surviving a shipwreck, being kidnapped by fishes, and learning to breathe in water, I'm about to die in a volcanic eruption? Isn't that ironic? Uh, not really, April. It's just bad luck. Um... You and Elias Morissette have the same problem with your definition of ironic. Okay, 
Now, I'm sure you think this is probably something really useful to look at right now, but honestly, we're better off looking over here. Notice this tree right over here that has this thing stuck out of it. That's one mother of a tree. It's got to be at least 100 meters tall. And what's that in the tree crown? Looks like a man-made construction. Yeah, we actually want to go visit that tree first. So let's go back out of this scene. Take your time, April. And now we have a new spot we can go. The large tree. And let's go down to this scene. There's another Dow. statue right there, by the way. Shh. Who's there? Duh. Shut up. I know there's somebody there. I heard you. Is she gone? Nope. She's still around. Shut up, shut up, shut up. If you won't come out, I'll just sit down here and wait. Sooner or later, you'll have to show yourself. Solar Eclipse! Oh my god! Ah! I hate this place. I so hate it, I can't even sit down without crushing the natives. Big person alert! What are you? What does it look like? Uh, a talking twig? We're stickmen. And you're an accident waiting to happen with your large, ungainly body and wobbly legs. All right. This is going to be another conversation I'm going to probably skip over because this is a long conversation. This is kind of a long section we're going through here. Um, so I'm going to skip through this and I will catch up with you on the other side. I'll see you in a few. All right, let's see if I can summarize about 10 minutes worth of dialogue here. Um, first of all, the three people that April is talking to you here are Wick, Willow, and Woody. They are stick men, and they live here next to the mother tree. That is this thing right here. The only other people currently on the island are the Alations. Of course, they live up near the volcano, but they don't allow humans or anyone else to come talk to them. Whenever human merchants show up, they just fly down to the beach, do their trading, and then fly back up. So they can't get up there. Now, the rumbling noise we're hearing, and the reason the stickmen are irritable, is because of the giant named Quaman. Quaman used to live up on the cliff overlooking the Orlawal village. That's the crab people we saw before. And he used to sit up there and fish. That's why April said that was a good fishing spot. But Quaman nearly stepped on one of the Ullerwall children and nearly crushed it because he is a giant after all. And they banished him from his village. And since he can't fish and fry fish and eat fish, he got depressed. And so he's going off somewhere to sleep. And he is snoring. Now these statues are all part of a communication system created by a race called the Dolmari, who used to live here. Obviously, that's their city that we couldn't identify earlier. And these statues are all designed so that one listens to another statue and then it broadcasts to a different statue, depending on how they're set up, kind of like a telephone exchange. There is also a big head up at the top of the volcano. Remember, we saw that. And that was used for an all-island broadcast, so to speak. And what is happening is Quaman is sleeping next to one of these statues, and it is broadcasting his snores to the big head on the top of the island. And that is causing the vibration we're hearing. So obviously we have to figure out this telecommunication system and use it to talk to and see if we can get wake him up. Well, first thing, we're, we're going to do a few more things first. First of all, we're going to go up to the top of this tree here. And here's that thing we saw before. It's a big wooden crossbow, I guess. I wonder who built it and what it's for. And there's a path over here. If I could somehow get across to that path on the other side, I'd probably be able to make my way into the Alation village. Yes, 
So that's what we need to do, obviously. So let's go see if the stickman can tell us anything about this um, crossbow. Who built that big crossbow in the tree? I did. Well, I thought of it. And these two nincompoops gave a helping twig on the uh, manual side. So they built it, and you supervised? Yep, but it's not done. There are still a few pieces missing before we can blast off for Luna. Did you say blast off for Luna? That's what I said, Luna. As in the moon? The same. You intend to go to the moon using that... thing? Lunar cannon. And yes, that's the plan. You guys are loonies! If by loonies you mean visionaries, then yes, yes we are. Isn't loonies a good term to apply to someone who is going to Luna, but you won't go there? How come you're not working on your lunar cannon now? Because of that infernal noise is why! So, if the noise stops, you'll go back to work on your cannon? That's the plan. I'll see you guys later then. If you don't step on us first. Alright. So, again, we have to get... Um, Amon to stop snoring. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the top of the volcano here. And now I'm going to look inside the mountain. You can make it, April. There you go. Okay. Oh, it's a Triforce. Um, we've got a little wheel here with a line in it. We've got a little aperture. Nothing to do with science. And if we look through this aperture... It's a small, eye-sized aperture with a crystal in it, like a lens. Maybe some kind of telescope? I don't see anything interesting. Yeah. So what we need to do is we can take our key, remember this thing, and use it in the Triforce here. And we can turn it. We can only turn it one way here. And you notice whenever we turn it, this symbol changes. And if I look through here... It's a statue standing in the ruins of a city. So that's the statue in the ruins. So obviously that symbol refers to it. Okay? Now let's see what the next one is. I can see a statue on a cliff overlooking the sea. And that's the cliff. I don't see anything interesting. So we obviously don't have to worry about that one. I don't see anything interesting. I don't see anything interesting. It's a statue just below a really tall tree. And obviously that's the one that we just found, the one in the village, or the one in the jungle there where the stickmen are. All right. So this basically tells us which symbol belongs to which I see interesting. statue. And that's the volcano one. Somebody's looking back at me. Oh, wait. It's just my eye. The lens is turned into a mirror. Okay. And we're done, because that's where we started. So what we have to do is we have to get a relay set up between the statues so that at the end it broadcasts to the volcano. So, and the... Um, Hang on. And the different, but all of the statues are not necessarily intact. So some of them are missing things. So we got to be careful with which one we go to in what order. Now, it just so happens that remember when we were looking at this one before, I commented that it had the little. Um, picnic table looking thing on it. Well, that's the symbol for the volcano. So obviously this one can transmit to the volcano. 
Now remember the top is shouting, so that's output, and the bottom is listening, so that's input. So let's take the key and put it here. And I want to send to the volcano. So I'm going to keep turning this until the volcano one comes up, which is right there. Okay, so now it's getting to the volcano. So now I have to do an input to this one. And for the input, I think we're going to start with, um, well, let's start with the cliff. The cliff, if you remember, is that part. Actually, we'll start with whichever one happens to be on here. Okay, like I said, it's the cliff. See, that was the symbol for the cliff. So it's going to come here from the cliff. I'm going to take this, and then we're going to head back down to the beach again, and go visit the cliff. There's still a crab here. He's still crabby. And it still looks like a guy kneeling under a shell. I can't... All right. Okay, so we need to send it to the ruins. That's the top one. So let's see if we can send this to the ruins. The ruins are the little arrow shape, if you recall. Yeah, there it is. And the only other thing we know of is the trees, which is kind of the letter S. So let's see if we can get this to the trees. Or from the trees. Out the way. Yes, there it is. Okay. So now this one is listening to the one in the trees and is sending to the ruins. When the ruins is in the volcano, of course. Okay, at any rate, this is now set. So let's take the key and keep on going. I guess we have to go to the trees next, huh? Where's the path? There it is. Let's go to the big tree up in the jungle now. Run, April, run. Alright. And we do the same thing here. Now, we need to send it to the cliff, which is the little circle with the arrows coming out of it. Step it again. There we go. that one. And we need to get it from here, basically, because we're going to be talking to it. So we need to put the little S shape down here. There it is. And at this point we should be done. Let's take the key just in case. It's a creature with large ears. Okay, we should have everything set up now, and um, all we have to really do is just talk to the ear. Not oh, sticking in with you. Hello. Looks like Quorum 
to me. Uh, we'll be there. And we actually have to start carrying on the conversation again. Um, this is kind of a long conversation, so I'm going to probably summarize it and get back to you in a second. Hello, Quaman? Alright, even though I skipped a bunch of that, um, all that I really skipped was some sad sack stuff with Quaman saying, I have no friends, and April saying, I want to be your friend because I can... I just want to talk to you because I need help. But that's kind of the, all that we went through there. So let's go on into the jungle and go meet Kwame, who is over here. And we're about to have another long conversation with Kwame. And this one is a little hard to break out of in the middle. So we'll just do what we can here. All right, um, just to summarize what we just heard, uh, Kwaman used to work at the Circa in Khorasan as a strong man, and his big trick there was um, shattering rocks with his bare hands. And one day, the Caliph of Khorasan came to the um, Circa and wanted to see him do his show. So he decided to, they had him break a rock that he had never broken before. He had never broken that kind of rock. And when it did, it shattered and rock splinters went everywhere and it injured the Caliph and the Caliph's son. And so they thought that the Caliph was going to have Quaman killed, so he got a ticket on a ship leaving. And when the ship passed this island, he swam over to it and he's been here since. Now, he used to stay at the Orwal village, because it was the best fishing spot in all on the entire island. But one day, he nearly stepped on a Orwal child, and they told him to go away, because he was too dangerous to be around. And so now he's having to live here, but he doesn't want to... He hates the fact that he doesn't have his prime fishing spot anymore. Would you like to move back to the Orwal village? Oh, yes. Kwama be wishing that more than anything in the world. I saw an Orlawal down by the beach, just outside the village. It seemed to be in pain, but I didn't know what to do. Perhaps if you come along, you can help him out and get back in favor with the Orlawal people. Yes, perhaps Kwama can help, even if the Orlawal do not want him back. Here it is, the, uh, Orlawal? Can you help it? Perhaps Kwaman can help. Poor Olawal. He'd be crying for help. Uh, Kwaman see what be wrong. The Olawal not shed its shell when time come, and now it be stuck in the shell. Why didn't the other Olawal come to its assistance? Their claws be no good for this work. They be helpless. But Kwaman help. Kwaman be good with his hands. Kwaman be happy. Quaman accept your graceful thanks, sir. Thank you. You be making Quaman very happy. Quaman accept your offer and be grateful to the Olawal people. Thank you very much. What? What did he say? Why did you thank him? Olawal be inviting Quaman to stay on the cliff above the village, where he can fish again. Kwaman be very, very happy now. You understand what it's saying? Olawal language be easy to understand. It be just click and clack and clock. I'm so happy for you, Kwaman. Go on, don't let me hold you back. Okay, I seriously have to ask, what did he do to the Olawal? It looks like he just flipped them over and then flipped them back again. I didn't see that he actually did anything to the shell. And that all wall does really look like a guy just crawling around on all fours under a shell. I'm going to put it down as a bad special effect. They skimped on the graphics budget right there, but okay. Let's go tell the stick men that the snoring is gone and see what they're going to do now. All right, now that we're here, we can tell the stickmen they can start working on their lunar cannon again. Ah, 
How come you're not working on your lunar cannon now? Because of that infernal noise is why. But Quammen has moved back to the Orlowal village. He's not going to disturb you again, trust me. Really? How the heck did that happen? Nah, I don't care. The important thing is, we can work again. Thanks, lady. And this is kind of a weird sequence here, because you see how the stickmen are slowly walking up that ramp to the tree. And I don't have control. I have to actually wait till they all make their way up there. So I'm going to fade out for a second. Okay, we're finally back in control, so now we can go up here. I don't know why that sequence was so long, it just... whatever. How's it going? Almost there. Oh, uh, one tiny little problem, though. And that is? We don't have a bowstring for our... uh... uh... Propulsion drive mechanism, Wick. Uh, what he said, uh, yeah, we need a bowstring. Uh, something strong and flexible and sinewy. Like what? I don't know, lady. I'm no engineer. I'm just a supervisor. String made from animal guts would be perfect. Yeah, but look at us. We look like the kind of stick men who'd make good hunters. Do you see me going after a gank beast carrying what? A comb? A dry leaf sharpened to a razor edge? Alright, so apparently we need to get a string of some kind for the stick men so they can build the lunar cannon. Let's go see if Quammen can help us, after all. He's our friend now. What is this thing right here? It looks like a bottle or something lying on the beach. There's probably a genie in it. Too bad we can't get it. We can't pick it up. Is that something on top of that little pillar there? Damn, I can't tell. Hi, Quammen. How's the fishing? Hey, Quammen. How's the fish biting? With its teeth? But not today. Why's that? Quammen be not certain. The fish always bite before. But then Quammen be having lure. Now no lure, just bait. What do you need to make a lure? Quaman can make lure with just anything, as long as it be colorful and not get heavy in water. You're a real DIY guy, don't you know? Always be something wrong with Quaman. That was actually a compliment. Oh. Probably should have just gone with do it yourself, April, but okay. Can I borrow your fishing rod? Quaman must catch fish first. So he can eat. After Kwama and catch fish, April can borrow a fishing rod. Happy fishing. Thank you. Okay, so we need to get something colorful and waterproof for Kwama to make his lure out of. I think a candy wrapper would work. That's probably waterproof. What do you think? Could this wrapper work as a lure? Yes. Yes, with some work. It'd be perfect for a lure. Now Quaman can make one, and hopefully catch many fish. Okay. The way this works is we have to leave and then come back. So we're just going to leave. And Quaman's up here on the cliff fishing. Shouldn't I be able to see him up there? I mean, he's right next to the statue. Why can I not see him? Okay. Oh, look. He's caught a fish. Did my lore work okay? It'd be working very good. Quaman catch a large, tasty fish very quickly. April be wanting a taste? Uh, no. No offense. I'm just not too fond of seafood. This not be seafood. It be human food. Yeah, okay. I'll see you later, Quaman. So will I. Goodbye. Alright, 
We need the fishing rod. Actually, we just need the line, but we have to pick up the rod. Or try to pick up the rod. I don't figure I'll be needing the rod anytime soon, but I'll borrow the line. Yeah, see. Kind of odd the way it does that. And that was a big fish he caught. So we'll pick up the fish bones. Alright. So obviously we're going to use the fishing line as the bowstring for the lunar cannon. And I will assume at some point we'll take them apart and give them back to... take it back apart and give it back to... Um, Twaman. Let's go show them what we found. Can you use this as bowstring for your, uh, lunar cannon? Let me see that. Oh yeah, that gonna work good. All right, listen up. I got us what we need. And now we finish this damn cannon. Go to work, people. Give us a few minutes, lady, and we'll be all done. Yeah, and now we get this strange fade-out with just a bunch of sounds in the background. I don't know why we didn't just get an actual montage of them working on their cannon, but that's the way they did it. It's just a weird little aside here, I guess. It worked. Of course it worked, you wood-brained fool! I built it! Sure you did. Are you done? Yes, ma'am. The lunar cannon is now ready to be tested. Well? Well what? Are you gonna do it? Do what? Test the cannon. Me? And get myself killed? I think not. But go ahead, be my guest. I don't think I'll fit in there. That ain't my problem. Okay. Now, the whole reason for this exercise is we need to get to that path over there. The one that leads to the elation. And we're going to use the cannon to do it. And to do that, we're going to make a little grappling hook out of this fish hook and the rope we've been carrying around. We're going to put that I'll in the I'll just place the hook along the bowstring, like so. And let the rope trail behind it. Okay, we're ready to fire. And the way we fire it is this lever right here. That's not going to make it to the moon. Okay. But it will let April Lara Croft her way across to the other side. And look. Here are the Elation. It's a leathery creature with wings. Like a mix between a giant bat and a pterodactyl. It must be one of the Elation. It looks more like a warrior than a storyteller, though. I hope it speaks English. I mean, all tongue. All right. Um... So we finished for the first half of the island, and we finally got into the Elation Village. That's the village you can see back here in the background. Um, and this is a good enough spot as any to break. So I'm going to stop here, and we'll catch up with April next time as she makes her way to the Elation Village and works out a way to reunify the Elations and the Marin. So until then, I am Dennis. I am Tan Stoffel, the Paleo Gamer, and I will see you next time.